Welcome to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles, where we are better together than separated. How you guys doing out there? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Listen, we got an exclusive interview today. You know, we got Marky D. We down here at the Lavish Factory. You know, he have his he have his new establishment down here. Um, this the Jordan man. gonna go down there on the history of George, man go down there on his history man what got him started you know he's a young entrepreneur and this what this show is about is trying to mold build and create more young entrepreneurs so hopefully us old guys can pass the game down to the young guys and a lot of young guys have to pass the game to the older guys too because listen he's been doing it for a while man you know so you can learn a lot from this young man you know so you know what I'm saying? My boy Louis Ray came through the factory, had to get him together, man. Just got him together with the lavishly, the press hey, crew, man. On, man. Sneaks, you feel me? You know, yeah, I gotta shop lavishly every time I'm shopping, man. This guy got every option in this motherfucker. I can't lie. He got all my homeboys, too. I see around the stuff, so we support the black business. And that's what we all doing right now. So, hey, if you ever see this shit while you're on the side, man, bro, get in with it, man. Tap in, y'all know what's going on. Y'all know it's big lavish. Officially. Just introduce it, introduce yourself to everybody, man, and give them your social media and let them know who you are. Well, I go by my Marky D's, but my name is Demarcus Davis. Uh, you can look me up on social media at Marky D's on Facebook and Marky D's on Instagram. But also, the store is Lavish Factory on Instagram and Lavish Factory on Facebook too. Well, uh, well, we we just gonna jump right into it. Where do you get the name Lavish? How you how you come up with Lavish? Uh, well, the day Lavish came from me and my uh, ex-girlfriend, we decided to start a business and we just was pondering on what would be some real exclusive but stand out at the same time. And Lavish started off as a hair company and it molded into something like this. Oh, so at first started it was a hair company. Yes, yes, yes. And Lavish, then... Lavish Bummers, Lavish Bummers, Lavish Bummers. Right. And I'm going to get back to selling hair too, so mm -hmm. that was the, the start point. Right. So... So you, you and your girl, y'all started doing hair, yeah. and you had the idea to, you wanted to do clothes, mm -hmm. you wanted to sell Jordans. Well, what was the first idea that took place in your mind to uh, start the Lavish Factory? Like I say, uh, it started off as a hair company, so back in, well, back in 2017, where Lavish originally started. Mm -hmm. So we had a couple ups and downs in the hair uh, industry. Unfortunately, I had went to prison. Mm -hmm. So it kind of went, business kind of went down, but when I returned, got it back going again. It was around pandemic time, so a friend of mine, uh, Pablo, shout out Pablo, uh, hit me up. He had a, um, a spot on grass. It was a hair salon. Mm -hmm. He's like, I see you out here selling your hair and stuff, man. Uh, why don't you come rent this spot out for me? You know what I'm saying? Sell hair out the spot. So I took him up on his offer, and when I got the spot, I'm like, um, what can I bring in here to attract more people? Because mm -hmm. the hair game is kind of up and down. I was making good money, but it wasn't a constant flow that I knew that I wanted to have. And you know then you mean? constantly wanted to be universal and deal with the men, too, yeah, not only yeah, to just yeah, the yeah, women. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, around that time, I'm just sitting back thinking. So I reached out to my homeboy, Cuddy, with Wilt. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I just got this spot on grass here, bro. Uh, what's up? What, how can I get some wealthy up in there? He's like, come holler at me. You got the came okay, went to Detroit, we discussed some numbers, locked in, got the wealthy in the mm -hmm. store. So I got the hair and the wealthy now. So opened up. So I'm like, okay, what else can I do? I brought in some more local vendors. Uh I started off uh Hustle Her, uh Finesse the Trap, and um uh, 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 uh How High. Uh how that's what how uh uh high high as F. That was okay. the name of it. So I started off with them local brands and Business was going good, you know what I'm saying? So 
that was the start. It was just hair and me selling other mm-hmm. brands. I ain't had no clothing line. I wasn't selling right. shoes or nothing yet. And you was, and at that particular time, you was carrying a lot of clothing brands yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you was actually looking for clothing brands yeah, to yeah, yeah, help yeah, lobby yeah. through your store at yeah, that particular yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was running, so just trying to come together and get money. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it was, I come from the street, you feel what right. I'm saying? So I want to bring the whole city. You know what I'm saying? How mm-hmm. can I get everybody shopping? Involved, more, you know yeah. what I mean? So if we can get money together, we all yeah. come together. So she said that the brain so on it, it turned out to be a great thing because it, it bloomed into what we got today. And one thing about getting everybody to shop with you, if you got everybody clothes line in your store, everybody going to come and shop for with sure, you. For sure, for sure. You know, um, so then you start getting, because one thing about shoes, man, shoes is one of the hard games to get into. Sure. You know, you got to know the different sizes. You know, you you know, you got a certain budget and you don't want to spend the, uh, you don't want to buy the wrong sizes. So how did you go about, you know, what was your process, man, of, of when, when you first got on, how was your process of what sizes did you buy? And, and, and like, what was the common size for you? So uh, the shoe game, so uh, when I left grad shit, I moved to the mall. So this is how I get into the shoe game. So when I left grad shit, uh, moved the store into the Fashion Square Mall. Uh, I, a lot of people, my friends around me, is like, "Do you need to start selling shoes?" Shout out We Heart Kicks, mm-hmm. one of the uh, biggest, my little cousin, and he is a big mentor to me too because mm-hmm. he was in the shoe game first. So, and that's what you just said. We got us old folks, got a young learn from the young folks mm-hmm. shout out we hired quick time he uh was a real mentor and telling me how to do it so he said get the shoes in the mall so one thing about it you gotta have the money to invest into these right. shoes because i don't know what people think but i go into the store i'm paying the same amount for the jordans as you is mm-hmm. i just bring to the store now i'm going to resell it to you but you're going to give me what i want for mm-hmm. so i go in i just get a whole rundown you know what i mean from sizes baby to men's 14 16. Uh-huh. and once the community started seeing me kept it in in a variety they just started coming to me coming to uh-huh. me and then the inventory just started really because i put back into my business i wasn't uh-huh. going partying i wasn't right buying fitness things i was just right. doing doing what i was Study supposed to do recycling your money, money back, back into the business and as i kept doing it just drugs coming out every week so uh-huh. i'm grabbing each drug i may not sell out all the last week release but New lease coming out, I can add to the inventory, and I've got more and more and more. Because one thing about business, people don't understand, you're not going to sell everything as soon as you get it. Some things you're going to sit on. That's called inventory. Mm-hmm. So you got to understand, like, you got to put back to get in. So, like, like, what do you do, like, when you didn't have stale inventory? Like, inventory that you didn't kept for a while. You're like, man, I got to get rid of this. Like, what's your, what's your, what's your, uh, What's your way of getting rid of it, and how do you? So true, do you do true, it? truth be told, like I'm actually like I ain't go to school with nothing about business, so I'm actually learning that mm-hmm. concept right now. I hired an accountant to help me with these things because you got to know when to get rid of old money. Because me, I'm just like I'm, I'm gonna get it off. I'm, right. gonna, I'm gonna hold on, hold on. It's originally gonna get right. off, but in business, you cannot have that right. mindset, and that's why I just started coming up with the fifty percent off. I just had a ten dollar table here when I opened up ten dollar table right. like this. Because people, the consumer is looking for a great deal. Mm-hmm. Like, it's okay to have your exclusive pieces at the high market, but as a shopper, you're looking yeah. for the, 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 the better discounts. deal, the discount. Yeah. So the more discounts I start implying to the store, the, the more I kept seeing right. traffic coming. Yeah. Okay, I'm like, okay. so And everybody always wants the cheapest discount. You feel me? But the discount money, you got to put directly back in the middle because you, mm-hmm. you made it took a loss. Yeah. So, so now you got to buy some to replace that to double your money back now, you know mm. what I mean? So it's it's constantly putting it in, constantly putting it in. And once you discipline yourself to do that, like you can you can be pretty good. Mm-hmm. So what you say to them to them people, them shoppers that come in here and be like, these drawers too high. <laughs> you know, do you get that? They be like, why you saying that these drawers? I, 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 I get that a lot, and, and I break it down. So I ask them. So if you were me, and you went to the store, you bought a drawer for two twenty five. You got overhead you got rent you got wi-fi you got to buy more inventory yeah. you got insurance you got uh um your, your camera system yeah. your alarm system so if you got all this on overhead what would you sit and sell your right. jordan for to make a profit because it's right. about making a profit because you got to put money back into your business mm-hmm. to keep your business going so what would you 
do. So after I ask that, they they understand like, oh, I see now because mm -hmm. I'm paying two twenty five. So I'm only putting I put a hundred dollars on. Right. So. Two twenty five on that's three twenty five. Mm -hmm. Now it depends on where Jordan is. You gonna go to StockX. You gonna go to go. You gonna go to all these other companies. You are gonna pay them shipping, handling all that with no problem. Mm -hmm. Like I'm in your backyard. I'm saving you the two week wait. I'm mm -hmm. saving you the the miss size that yeah. they might see. I, yeah. I, it may not be what it is when you get there. It may even be fake. You right. know, for sure you get it. Right. So hundred yeah. percent authentic at my store. I sell mm -hmm. nothing fake. Like. So how can you? So how do you tell the real George from the fake ones? I get them from the mall. <laughs> and I get them from when I buy from customers. I got an app that I run them, and they tell me if it's a replica or if it's authentic or not. So if I buy from you and you don't have your proof of purchase receipt, I'm going to run your shoe or, or your clothing or any of the, anything that uh -huh. you buy. I'm going to make sure it's 100 percent authentic. Ah, uh -huh. so because I wanted to ask you, do you think? Do you think the storefront with all this online shopping, mm -hmm. you know, we got a lot of storefronts because you here because of the mall. And, and I wanted to ask you that, too. You know what I'm saying? What was it that, you know, you just couldn't take no more that you moved to another location from the mall? Uh, why did you make that move? And do you think that storefronts are becoming obsolete and online shopping is the is the new and the, the exclusive thing now? Well, as far as the man, everybody asks, like, why did you leave the mall? And I keep real, like, I'm not the one to lie and act like business is all good. I couldn't afford the mall no more. Right. I was paying over three grand in the mall, right. and, and you know what I'm saying? I couldn't afford it no right. more. So, is I'm going to continue to make it look good right. because I mean, oh, it looked good, or right. you got a store in the mall, or was I'm going to get smart and make the best business move? Right. This location is half of what I'm paying right. at the Fashion Square Mall, so it was more of a business move while right. I left. I would have loved to stay in the mall, but the number that I wanted to go down to, the mall didn't want right. to go down to that number for mm -hmm. me. And I understand, like, y'all got to get yours too. Right. Y'all can't short me because. Y'all want to help me out? It's, it's all a business. So right. that was one of the reasons why I left the, the Fashion Square Mall. And as far as online shopping, go like, mall, and, I, and that's what I tell people that all the time. Like, it's not just Saginaw Mall that's declining. It's malls all over mm -hmm. America that's declining from Detroit. Mm -hmm. you go to Flint. Look at the Flint Mall. The Flint Mall, like the, the Saginaw Mall. So mm -hmm. it's not just that. It's like Amazon, Shing, uh, Team U. Team U. Mm -hmm. Unauthentic real right. sites, a lot of knockoff mm -hmm. brands that you know. Let's keep it real. People do buy mm -hmm. the cheaper or the knockoff if they can get away with it. Mm -hmm. If they can get away with it, they're gonna mm -hmm. they're gonna rock it. Yeah. You feel me? And just like I got Spider hoodies, Young Thug brand. That's a three hundred fifty dollar hoodie. Like right. you really gotta have some money right. to buy this brand. But if you go on StockX and go, that that hoodie is the same amount on there. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. not like that. I'm price guys. You know, this is what the resale value is of the merchandise. And as far as like like all out like that that's that's just the way of America right now. You feel me? Like people are rather shop online and get out and come to the store. But as mm -hmm. far as me, they tell me they some people say they appreciate my store because they want to try that shoe on. They right. want to try that shoe to make sure it got the right size yeah. or whatnot. And like me, I don't like waiting. Usually when I go out and get my stuff, I'm gonna wear it that day. I'm going out that night, you know. So ain't nothing like coming in the store. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. And um, we just had a recent tragedy with the wealthy stuff. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I yeah, seen yeah. where he had posted, someone came in his store, yeah, yeah. set a fire yeah. to the, yeah. I mean, not, I mean, just set a fire to yeah. the clothes, yeah. like yeah, intentionally. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, what I wanted to ask you is that, um, how did the news hit you and how did it impact the way you view your business now? Well, they let me realize it's real life hatred out there because, as you can see in the front of the scene, right. what they were telling me is they're labeling it as a hate crime because an individual just came in there and purposely and, right. and intentionally set their, their establishment so, on right. fire. Like, that, it's sick, it's disheartening because I know the work that they put into and right. I know the work that I put into and what we put into together because they helped me get to this point. You know what I'm saying? So it was really devastating. You know, Cuddy called me early that morning, like, bro, you ain't going to believe what just happened. I'm like, what? I'm like, man, when I got on social media and I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, man, man, mm -hmm. first thing I thought about was like, man, I hope that doesn't happen to me. Like, I right. hope that the community respects me and I hope nobody has enough hatred yeah. in their heart to try to destroy something that I worked so hard for because, like, it's just, it's stupid at the end of the day. Like, it has no meaning about, like, what was the purpose? What you think about the, the hate 
and the malice and the and the different malignant things that's going on in the world today, especially in the in the in the young black community. You know, you got a lot of people that don't like you because of what you didn't molded yourself into. You know, but in life you have to go through some in order to become who you want to be. Sure. A lot of people ain't went through things yet. Sure. So they 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 sitting back and they wasting a lot of time hating. Sure. They wasting a lot of time not liking that person. Sure. You know, because I know you got a lot of people who don't who who disfavor you. For sure. And you a good guy. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll look out for any and you'll look out for everybody. For sure. Just give me some of your words on oh man, what you feel about the dislike and the hate in the black community. You know what I'm saying? Like it's crazy because once you say you have to go through something to understand it, you know what I'm saying? And at one point in time, I was misguided mm -hmm. and going through a lot of things in life that once you sit back when you get older, but like it's not really worth it at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Life is about enjoying and, and, and enjoying your family because as you can see, like mm -hmm. people dying left and right, you know what I'm saying? So you don't know how long it is, you, you go your family. So you need to enjoy the times that we got together right now, you feel me? So I try to stay away from, from those type of things because like I say, I, I'm not a part of that lifestyle no more. I'm about building the community mm -hmm. up and, and helping. Like I give a lot of young people's jobs and I sponsor a lot of kids at the local high schools around here. So I do a lot of things to try mm -hmm. to put back into the community right. instead of tearing it down. And like right. I try to encourage a lot of young Right. Young males are saying, I'm like, bro, this ain't the way, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you got to do something different because once you get that time and, 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 and you can't come back from death, mm -hmm. like, you can throw your whole life away for, for nothing. At the end of the day, it means nothing. Ain't 30 nothing. seconds of, of not thinking can get you 30 years. For sure, for sure. So, as far as people like on um, the hatred, and this, like, like, I really don't pay attention to it because I like, like I say, like, as long as I'm, God got me at the end right. of the day, you feel me? So right. I don't pay attention to that. And, and I get a lot of, I, when I first got into it, I thought like that. But I get so much love and support from people I right. didn't even expect. Right. It, it, it's been nothing for love. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I shout out Saginaw all the time. Mm -hmm. Without Saginaw, yeah. I wouldn't be here. You yeah. feel me? Exactly. You know, I'm not, this is no lavish factor without Saginaw. This exactly. is where it all started at. I'm forever grateful for it. Right. And for those, the ones that support me, I, I tell them all the time, I love y'all tremendously. Right, sure. right, man. Saginaw all day. You know, and what I wanted to ask you, because I know you've been through a, a adversity, some adversity of your own. You know, you've been through some tough times, including being locked up. Sure. Looking back, what's the most important lesson you learned from that experience? And I tell people all the time, people may say I crashed, but I say prison really helped me. You know what I'm saying? It, it established me to learn to walk on my own, mm -hmm. don't need a crowd. Because I went to prison, like, I'd have had my friends that I was once hanging with around me to, you know, help me out or feel protected mm -hmm. or something like that. Even though I always stood on my own, like, in prison, it, it, it was just me. You feel mm -hmm. me? So, and I learned a lot. That's why I got... I was already into business before I went, mm -hmm. and the books that I read and the knowledge I got from other people in there helped me to get out to be like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm like, I ain't on that no more. I'm on. I'm gonna focus on this, and I'm about to build this as big as I can build. When I do something like I put my all into it, you feel mm -hmm. like I don't. I don't think mediocre. I think the biggest anything I do, I'm gonna put my all into it. And this is just a, a vision of me putting my all into something. And I've been doing that my whole life, even with the streets. When I was hustling, I put my all into right. it. I always yeah. tried to put keep your myself all into up. You know what I'm saying? Even though I was doing wrong, yeah. and I but was getting a bad outcome, yeah. now I'm doing something good, and mm -hmm. this is the outcome. Now, and that's why I come like, just try something positive. When you live right, God going to bless you. And mm -hmm. this is the best of me living right now. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, it's, um, And I know a lot of times, a lot of people, especially young guys, they don't want to make that transition to educate themselves. What I call is being self-taught, autodidactic. Like you say, we ain't been to college, but we know that we can learn anything we want to. We got yeah. YouTube University. We got enough people around us. As TikTok, to where, University. TikTok <laughs> University. That all these different educational apps, you know, that can that as to where we can circumvent college. And a lot of people is becoming entrepreneurs. Um, how how important is education? I want to ask you, how important is education in business? And what's one of the greatest books that you ever read that helped you to become who you are today? Uh, one thing I, 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 one, I, I have, I don't like education, so I don't want my words to get confused, but I tell people, so I didn't go to college to start a business. Mm -hmm. Like, 
not saying you don't need because I sit back and I I asked Facebook this question almost a couple months ago, like, do y'all think it's a smart idea for me to go back to get take a business course in college, even though I have already started my business mm -hmm. I'm in this field? Some people say yeah, some people say nay. So it's really you. If it, it it's all about your desire mm -hmm. and drive. You feel me? Like if 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 you determine and you want to get the knowledge and read the books and put it into your business, whatever it is you want to do in life, you're going to get the outcome mm -hmm. that you got to work. And there's a lot of people that's right. lazy today that, right. that don't want to put in work and scared to take that chance, scared to sacrifice financially, right. meaning by, okay, I'm, I can't go eat McDonald's. Today. I got to eat right. this rain. Right. Yeah. You feel me? Like, I can't yeah. eat steak. Like, people don't want to sacrifice yeah. things like that. They, and if you don't sacrifice and put your money towards some, as far as investments to make it keep going like this, you're going to be stuck in the same spot that you're in. Chances make champions. I tell it all the time. You have to take the risk and believe in yourself. And one thing you got to take advantage of is social media. Social media is the biggest way to get your brand or whatever it is that you're trying to do off the ground because we all like this all day. Uh -huh. all right. And I tell you all the time, like even though I may not get a like on no uh -huh. post, I know you've seen it. Right. I know you've seen it because yeah. my, my, my followers telling me this and then I, one thing I do, I pay attention to the engagement. Yeah. And business, you got to look at all your little insights uh -huh. or any bit out there, Facebook and Instagram. Please just take a look at your engagement. It's gonna tell you when. And somebody just told me this thing like yeah. when the proper time yeah. to post it. So people looking at my posts and things yeah. like that, all that pay a part in business in today's world. Let me ask you this: so because a lot of people looking for that social media wave, they looking for that one thing that can go viral. Yeah. So when is it? When do they supposed to take advantage of that opportunity and sell something? Because I tell people all the time, well, you should be getting the followers to sell something. I mean, you can keep doing the skits or the com you know, the show or whatever you're doing, but you got to try to sell something to make some money. Sure. Because if you're not trying to make no money, then it don't make no sense. For sure. When do you think is the right time for that, that individual to sell something? It's a shirt or it may be a bracelet. Or it might be food. You know, when do you think it's that time for that person to and that's to what engage just, in business. And that's what I was just going back to say. It's all the dynamics of your page. Like, people use Facebook for the wrong right. things. Right. You feel Personal me? Personal like, things. Facebook, is, it, it, stuff. It is, I, Facebook I is more than what you think. And it can yeah. be more to you than what you think as far as just arguing and mess. We all know messy yeah. stuff sells. So what I do, when yeah. I see something messy going on, I promote my business under that messy post. You, I got a stuff. I So right. if I see uh, this person got 600 people online, guess what? I'm going to put my flight right in their comments because it's going to go. And you're going to see it. You feel what I'm saying? It's all about study. So you saying you you so when the post going viral, you'll put your, oh, yeah, put sure. your, put your business, business in, sure. the comments. in the comments. For okay. sure. So you're going to see it. You're going to see it. And one thing I say about business, and just for the clothing industry, we're going to use that for an example, the more people see your brand, is the more it's going to attract more people. And the more people see this lavish logo, and this is one of my new shirts I just dropped. Mm -hmm. This is not one of the, the, the standard shirts, but it's one of them. But the more they keep seeing lavish, they can be like, who is that? Mm -hmm. What is that? Okay, let me, it's a store. Okay, let me, and then you got a new customer right there. So one thing I say is going back to the beginning investment you have to invest mm -hmm. in your brand you have to get people to see your brand in order for your brand to work you can't drop a shirt and just give it to your cousin and think you about to take off what a foot traffic <laughs> is. like you you feel because you dropped the clothing line and put a logo on it that's it right no you got to do pop-up shops you got to get some business cards you need to get a website eventually once you mm -hmm. got the motion to do it you got to just promote you you can't be afraid to post shop Lavish. You see, mm -hmm. My brother, I'm gonna post shop lavish all day. Mm -hmm. Even though I might not get a like, but I'm gonna tell you to shop. People think like just because you made one post, that's it. No, mm -hmm. you got to constantly put it in people. It's face. just like a rapper making a song, yes. thinking because they didn't put it on their story, it's supposed to go no, viral. No, no, you got to stay, you got to be in the right, and you got to be able to get out and get in the right. Yeah, take marketing advertising. You feel me? Yeah. Like, and it's about who you know as well, like. People that you have to be popular or people have to know you to get your brand. No, you have to know the right people. Yeah. Just because your know, power person know me and they brand gonna take up. Right. If I don't know the right individuals, Visuals, you, yeah. you know what I mean? Like to make it happen. To make it happen. And it's like coming together. Like I said, came together to bring in other people's brands right. in, to put the spotlight on villains. I got villains in here mm -hmm. now. I got wealthy, always mm -hmm. had wealthy, got chosen one. Shout out chosen one. Them the brands that I have in here now, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? To, to keep this thing going, you know what I'm saying? And, and what are some of the other brands you would like to work with? 
the other brands I like to work with, uh, Maury Depp doing their thing right now. I hope I pronounced the name right. Maury Depp doing their uh, thing right now. Shout out Luxury Threads. I be seeing the youngin doing this thing. Um, and that's one thing I've been noticing too, man. Like the clothing game in second all be up and down. Like yeah. you <laughs> see a brand for man. Yeah, you like, won't see it no more. You know what I mean? So it's about it's consistency. Hard to, it's, hard to, it's hard to keep up with it. You it's, know what I'm saying? It's consistency, because man. You got to be consistent. You do. You do. You and especially with the print. Especially with the print, man. Like I took a six-month break off and got right back to it. You got to believe in yourself. So you do you actually it. work the machines yourself? No, no. All my clothing is manufactured. Like, right. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, Wealthy did wealthy took the screen print game to the level that it can't be re, re, recopied. So, and and that's like uh, wealthy did it. You right. feel me? They was the ones that the originators of mm-hmm. the person the shirt in the back, and I didn't want to imitate that. You feel me? So, all my things are manufactured. Right. Do you think that's a better way than printing it yourself? Hey, it's a better way because you got on demand print. Like I was saying, that's one thing. Like it could be duplicated, but it cannot. You is not gonna do what wealthy did. Like mm-hmm. what's more better than going to an establishment and getting a, a, a shirt to match anything that you shoe wise that you got mm-hmm. in your closet right there on the spot in less than ten minutes? Like that was the yeah. <laughs> that was the coldest. That yeah. was the, but, but yeah. you, you see how what they built off that. You feel yeah. like they, they they did that. They really yeah. did do that. That that was the coldest. So what's some clothing brands that you look up to? Some that you revere in DFI. Like I say, Wealthy was a big motivation. They 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 steered me uh um uh um luxury lifestyle. That was yeah. the brand I had in the mall. Uh Finesse the Trap. Like all my friends, the friends that I yeah. linked in with, all yeah. the vendors that chose the one, that's a big inspiration. Like yeah. she a, a major motivation and she a, a key to the whole this whole life. And she work a lot behind mm-hmm. the scenes with me. Like and right. I, said, I got a lot of people, uh Onika, that's my account. Shout out if y'all need y'all Texas dig, y'all go to Onika, Onika West on Facebook. Uh like this, like it, it take it take it take a it take a community in the village to get make yeah. you can't not do this right, by yourself. Right to keep this engine right? going. You can't do it by yeah. yourself. You feel me? So So what advice would you give to someone who's been through similar struggles like you? And that has transitioned into the to an entrepreneur phase, and that want to turn they life, but they want to turn their life around for the better. What would your advice be to them? Don't give up, man. You know, life is a struggle. We wake up with with, with personal issues every day, mm-hmm. uh, just things that's going on in the world that's out of our control. Like mm-hmm. one thing I live by, and I tell you, I just take this life thing one day at a time. Yeah. I don't, I don't. Really, you it's okay to think about the future and yeah. plan ahead, but in real life, you can't live for the future right yeah. now. Like you don't want to overwhelm you, yourself. You feel me? You got yeah. to take this thing day by day. You yeah. gotta get some, try to get something accomplished mm-hmm. each day you wake up. Mm-hmm. No one when you go to sleep at night, you can say, okay, I got this day. I got right, that, that day. Yeah. Each day, just just continue to build, man. And mm-hmm. it's gonna be adversity. It's gonna be ups and downs days. Like some days, I, I don't make a dollar in here. Like mm-hmm. some days, I don't get. One customer to come through that door, I don't want to get to me because mm. I know tomorrow I may get four, five, people. ten, then twenty. Next customers. after that, I may reach my goal mm. of uh, five thousand a week right, or something like that. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you just gotta just, just take it one day at a time. Don't give up and and and, and put positive people around you. You gotta have, yeah. you gotta feed off people. That's, you can't you can't just think you can do, like I said you can't do things by yourself but you got to be around what you want to be you mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying like if you want to be a millionaire try to surround yourself around millionaires mm-hmm. you feel me so that, that's, that's because it and it's crazy because I was just talking to my friend and sometimes when you're in a tank right when you're in a certain city in a certain community you see the same thing every day every day every day so your mind becomes equal to this For sure. you know you wake up yeah. you go to work yeah. Uh, you talk with your friends and gossip at work. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You get off work. You get the kids. You know, you might have your nightcap. So then your life becomes a routine, right? Sure. So it's 15, 20 years of this, it's no growth. For sure. It's no expansion. For sure. You know. I tell people all the time, you got to get out your environment. You got to hang around people who you want to be. You got around hang you gotta hang around people that's above you in status, financially, education. Um, and, and and because if you don't, what happens? You have no growth. For sure. You gotta have some seeds planted somewhere. And if your life's so much into a routine as to where your mind equate the environment that you in and not going any higher, then maybe you need to rethink your plan. For sure. You know, 
you might need to go in and critique some things. And it's, it's crazy that you said that because I just made a post on Snapchat a couple weeks ago. I like to get out like it, what, what really motivates and drives me is going to them big cities and seeing them big tall mm. buildings and nice yeah. stuff. I like I just said it was part of, like, I didn't drive to Chicago just to reset my mind real quick mm -hmm. to look out the hotel one and look at this because you don't see that in Saginaw. Yeah. I'm not saying like it's not things to move, but you need things to motivate, motivate you. Right. So you have that big, pretty sky right. around and like, oh, I'm going to make a million dollars a day. Like, exactly. You don't get that. And yeah. that's right. That's yeah. my goal. I'm going yeah. to for And the you big see people money. like you us. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like here in Saginaw, it's more, it's more white people that's rich. You know you what I'm saying? We want to see uh, the vibe, a lot of black uh, people. You, you know what I'm saying? So go to Texas. I remember right. Houston. When she yeah. get out of here, you see them steam like, man. Yeah. You, you feel you need that motivation. And, and, it, and it, 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 it triggers something in your, your mind, mind sure. as to where you can bring something back to yeah. your city. For sure. And add to it. You know what and, I'm saying? And, something that you see missing. And, and that's what, like, I did prior to Open Miss. Like, I used to go to other cities and, and go to stores like yeah. mine and just feel like, how my store is built is a piece of things other stores that I've been to mm -hmm. not have seen, and I just put my own twist to it, and it came into what you know what I'm saying, what you see today, and that's and that's basically how you got you got it. Something's got to motivate you, unless yeah. you just a cold out thing like, right. like, yeah. that you create something from the ground yeah. up. But it's okay to to buy it off some and, and put your twist to it yeah. to make it to what you want because that's what life is. Yeah. Like there's everything is pretty yeah. much the same. Yeah, it's just a lot of putting twists to it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And your DNA is 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 unique. You For know sure. what I'm saying? You you only get one you. For sure. So anytime you get the anytime you get the opportunity to put your hands and put your DNA on something, you want to do it because your DNA can't be replicated by nobody else. You know, so if you get an opportunity to create, you get an opportunity to be able to put your DNA a foot forward. Go for it. For sure. So before we get out of here, man. We want to ask Marky D, man, we want to ask Lavish Factory a couple facetious questions. If Lavish Factory was a person, what would it be? A baller, a hustler, or someone completely unexpected? If Lavish Factory was a person? Yeah. Would it be, what, what kind of person it would be? I'm gonna a say baller, that, a hustler? And it's like one, like, it's one of my, like I say, a lot of people motivate me. And one of my motivations is Nipsey Hustle. Like, mm. Lavish Factory be Nip. Yeah, Nip, Nip was a, a hustler. Me and Nip came. Me and Nip got similar story. We both come from the streets, turned our life around, and, and just used business to, to mm. the marathon. You feel mm. me? It, it, and that's that's my Synonymous moment. You, feel, to me? you yeah. feel me? That's one of my biggest inspirations. Nip, yes. So you've seen a lot of styles come and go. What's one fashion trend you hope never comes back, and one you glad is here to stay? I'm saying I'm I'm older, man. I I I I'm trying to I, I'm catering to it, but the flare the flare jogger fans, man. I, 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 I hope I hope I, I hope the flare jogger fans. Yeah. I'm more the polo right, uh, yeah. man type guy. Yeah. So that, and I got some uh, my uh, next line for the drop uh, October lavish hills. I got some boot cut jogger pants, and I got some taper. Lab is regular jogging suits for the drop next month, so I'm trying to I'm trying to do I'm trying to come trendy, right? And I'm trying to you know what I'm saying right. like, stick to your own to me, personality. My age, yeah. good, but like it, it, it's the tape. It, it's, it's, it's so the what you think about before I go to my next question? What you think about the Rick Owens? You know because you in his tennis shoes and the Jordans and stuff. Do so. Do you like the Rick Owens? Do I you like, like the I like, all, I like all designer shoes, man. Mm -hmm. and, and the you name one of my favorite is uh is the Dior uh B twenty two. You know okay. that so. That that them sneakers right there is 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 is, yeah. is, is, is top of the line. For sure. And they say they last a lifetime. For sure, they they strange. So yeah. Balenciagas, I like they sneakers, and I, I I mess with them. Yeah. So, what's the craziest mo or most memorable request you have from a customer since opening Lavish Factory? Man, somebody inboxed me at one in the morning and asked me, "Can I make them a shirt by seven a.m.?" Like. <laughs> I'm like what? It's one of the more like, and that's one thing. Hey, please, like, please don't inbox me at, at one in the morning. hours talking about drawers and shoes. Like, come on, I'm in the bed trying mm -hmm. to sleep. Y'all inbox me talking about why are you thinking about drawers at one right. in the morning? Right. Get they just think this, your, this the only thing you do. You I ain't got to get no rest. Like, ain't got no personal I'll life. Up, I'll be up all night, but please, mm -hmm. I don't like talking shoes at night. <laughs> all right. 
If you could collaborate with any brand or designer to create the ultimate lavish factory shoe, mm. what would it be and what would it look like? For sure, I got to come join. For sure, I got to collab with, with Mike. You Definitely. We'll be on some, on some, on some elevens mixed with my top drawers is is fours, elevens, tens, and twelves. So it'll be some kind of tied into that. It, yeah. It'll be some, it'll be some lavish for sure. Yeah, it'll be some lavish for sure. So man, you know we want to wrap this interview up, man. We want to thank Mike Deasy, man, sure, for, for sure, giving for us sure. this great interview down here at Lavish Factory, man. Y'all come on down here. Get some of these joints. Get some of these. 38 line there, road. I'm right across from Walmart, man. Right down, the, right on the same side as Hikata. I'm right next to Check and Go, man. Y'all come out. Man, listen, man. He got a beautiful store down here. I was going to get up and grab some things, but I took some pictures. So y'all going to make sure y'all see the pictures in here. But But man, this is a young man that's been on the journey, man, that been through adversity, man, that changed his life around, that made the transition to make his life better, man. And his life is steady blossoming year after year. Before we get out of here, I wanted to ask you, what's one of your what's one of your greatest accomplishments, man? And, and, and what's one of your greatest moments? Highlight one of your greatest moments for us since you've been doing this. Actually, one of my greatest moments, well, it's two, it's two actually. One is being able to sponsor the high school students and middle mm -hmm. school students around the city. The one I done sponsored from Prime Homecoming, just you know, just to see them the joy happen for mm -hmm. you know, that is is accomplished for me. And it's one soon to be. I was just nominated as a young professional at for with a NAACP award. Oh, uh, we got a better uh, next Sunday that I'm gonna be attending. Man, shout out yeah. to NAACP. Yeah. I'm grateful for that award. So how, man. How, how, how man? How did you feel, man? When man, you said that, it was shocking, man. I come here because I did this one by the plane, right? Feel, like just the like, Saturday, man, I just like, come from from Saturday Saturday, you know, yeah. it's, it's this one. It, the people who really right. know me and know my story, like. Right. It's one part of planning for me to be able to be in this position that I am right now, wanting a number of God, and it's just a true testament that you yeah. can do right. If yeah. you if you want to do right, it, you can be done. But it got to be within you. Right, right. And like he said, you got to give up something to get something. You got to sacrifice something. You're not going to get through life trying to get to your goals and dreams and you living in pleasure every day. For sure. It's not going to happen it's like that. Happen. You're going to have to give up pleasure. One thing about a drunk, a drunk got to give up his greatest thing in order to be something. And what's that? Liquor. The Come on. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you have to give up your greatest thing that you love in order to get to where you want to be and be that entrepreneur that you want to be. You know, we got Mark D. How old are you is, Mark D? 36. I'll be 37 next year. Man, young, man. Young down here, man. Have his own establishment, man. Creating opportunities for other people. Being deified by the city of Saginaw. Now he's a woman recipient for the NAACP, and the list goes on. Yep, man. And, and, and today's the last day, but uh, I also have won the Saginaw Community Awards three years in a row. Now we're looking for the fourth year this year. Oh, man. Let's see? Sure. See what I'm saying? Just by changing your life around. Sure. 36 years old. Sure. He got a long way to go, man. There's a lot more to be written to his story and his book of life. You know, I want to thank him, man, for a wonderful interview. For sure. You know, and I'm going to just let him ride it out, man, and give y'all the last word as we close this up. So, like I say, all the ways, I like to thank my city of Saginaw, man, because without y'all, there's no lavish factory. Appreciate you for Appreciate coming down here because, you know, things like this is what helps build a brand. The more y'all see it, the more the word gets out, man. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Can't thank y'all enough. And there y'all have it, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles, where... We are better together than separate. Thank you guys for tuning in.